Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees. A couple of days ago, I was at a Rare Fruit Council sale where all the growers and the vendors and the members and all of the people that love and have a passion for fruit trees got together. They get together twice a year and they sell uh, fruit trees. And as I was there, I, I love going because I love to film and video it for everybody, but I also love meeting people. And I met a man who lived in the area and he's been a member for a long time so i knew he had some great food in his yard and people would tell me oh yeah you want to interview him and film his yard so yesterday i got the opportunity to go visit his uh, yard he has a very very small yard but he's packed a lot of stuff in there and i was so impressed with it and i know you will be also now it was right off a of main road and i know my microphone so it was a little noisy in the background but definitely worth watching it he had two small houses right next to each other. Both houses had very small land, but he did some quite cool stuff with this. He definitely has stuff that uh, is unique and and uh, it's really cool. So check it out. Yeah. All right, everybody, here's Andy, and uh, he's a member of the Ref Food Council here in Palm Beach. And how long have you been growing trees? Oh, about 20 some odd years here. How'd I've you get here. into it? Oh, I've always grown trees. Everywhere I lived, I've always planted trees. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're here in your driveway here, and there's two cars and a lot of nets here. Yeah. So what's up with all these nets? The nets are to keep all the garbage from falling on top of the car, because uh, Caribbean almonds flower a lot and the leaves fall. And so. so these are two almond trees or one? Two almonds, yeah. Now this one looks like it's in your neighbor's yard. Well, that's my house too. Okay. <laughs> all right. So you got... Uh, yeah. Two, I have two houses next to each other, too. Yeah. So, so great. So uh, so you get almonds off this tree? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. They're about this big. And when you see, there's, there's fruit here. But they get a lot bigger than that. They're just a baby there. So they get about this big. And uh, when they're ripe, you can bite into it and take the juice out of it. It's okay. You can drink it. And the almonds are... About this long and they're thin but they're very tasty they're like regular almonds no 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 completely, no, completely different. different these are caribbean almonds okay so they, they only grow in the caribbean areas do they attract a lot of squirrels uh once in a while you see a squirrel but i don't know i don't see too many squirrels squirrels like avocados better yes or mangoes now did you <laughs> plant these trees that they were here uh -huh, yeah how many them. years ago uh, I think that one is 17, and this one is only about 10. Wow. Yeah. They grow very quickly. I've got a couple of uh, Royal Ponciana trees that I planted there a few months ago. And they get pretty big. You know, they are very beautiful flowers. Yeah. yeah. They get very big. But I will keep them trim. I've had this one cut back quite a bit. But it's still pretty tall, so. If you want to go with me this way, yeah. Point you out. There's a couple more. Beautiful trees. Yeah. That coconut there is called a Jamaican. Jamaican coconut, and it's a brown coconut. Really large. Lots of, lots of juice and lots of meat. How do you get them from all the way up there? I'll get a ladder and cut them down. Or get one of those cutters. And I've got a cutter and cut them down. Nice. I don't do it very often. Once in a while. So how much land? What? How much? This is point eighteen. Point eighteen. Yeah, one hundred and twenty-five by seventy-five. Okay. About this way. That bare tree there is a pecan tree. Where? That one there. That bare tree. Okay. Yeah. They lose all its leaves and stuff. Um. I've never had any fruit from it. It's about 12 years old. I bought three in Georgia. I gave one to my ex-brother-in-law who lives in Jacksonville, and he has already had fruit from it in about five years. This one's never had any fruit. You think it's just too hot out here? Well, they're supposed to grow here. They say they grow here in Florida. Why do you think you don't get any? I don't know. Maybe just a bum tree. Who knows? Yeah. Very hard to do. This is a Malayan coconut. Are those are the more dwarf ones? What? Are those the more dwarf type or no? They're kind of dwarf, yeah. They take a long time to grow. At three and a half years, they'll bear fruit. Well, all my coconuts bear fruit at three and a half. 
because I feed them a lot, you know. This one here is a Barbados cherry. It's looking kind of scrawny now, but it'll bloom out and get really nice. This one here is a nice mulberry, T-Y-C-E, the so the long mulberries. And that one there is a June plum, and that is, um, there's so many varieties. Uh, that is a purple one. It came from the Dominican Republic. Now they lose their leaves in the winter, right? Yeah. They have to leave in the this is a sapodilla, and I don't even know what kind it is. Did you put it in? Yeah. So you got sapodilla here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't know what kind it is? No, I don't know what kind they are. Very, very sweet. Nice, tasty fruit. How old is this tree? This one is about 15. 15 and years. And I've trimmed it quite a bit. And here is a loquat tree, which are a pain because you have to take them just perfectly because if not, they go they go rot it right away. So, And it's interesting that that tree is in the citrus family. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And they do better here than citrus. Oh, yeah. Citrus are, for some reason, Florida had a lot of problems with citrus. I don't know what the problem is. A lot of diseases. First, it was uh, canker. And then we got over the canker. They, they dug, dug all the trees out and burned them. And now we have um, greening. It, uh, the plant gets really weird and strange. Yeah, it's tough. But I haven't had any of that, but something's eating it there. That is a, uh, there is a worm, it's about this big, and it loves the citrus leaves. Excuse me. That is a dwarf banana. And they grow around six feet. Uh, mine grow about eight feet because we have a very fertile soil. We've had a lot of compost over the years. So if we go out this way, somebody knocked one back there. And here, all these flowers are my wife's flowers. These are uh, the butterflies, uh, flowers for butterflies. That's called fire stick. I can't remember. Now. The roses over there. We have bougainvilleas all over the place, uh, and of course the angora. I got different coconuts growing here. These yellow ones are Malaysian, and they're kind of a little bit dwarf. They take forever to grow. I think the first eight and nine years, you can still get the fruit without getting a lot. This one here is a blue banana. It comes from uh, Cuba. Uh, it's a banana that has like a little blue tinge. It's not real tasty. I have it there because somebody gave it to me. That one there is a Goldfinger, and that is going to be the new commercial banana. That's taking over the Chiquita banana. So. Oh, really? Okay. All these in this side here are all um, apple bananas. You look up there. Are there many different varieties of apple bananas or just one? There's only one that I know. Yeah, I have them and they're delicious. Yeah. You see the, the bunch up there? See, apple bananas usually grow to about 15 feet. My plants grow 25, I thought almost 25 feet, some of them. Yeah. As you can see, that's very lush. That's because of the compost. And here we have a breadfruit tree. Oh, wow. That came from Puerto Rico, about this size. And it's about a year and four months old. Wow. Yeah. No breadfruit. It likes it. It likes it here. Oh, you won't have fruit until probably another year. Okay. This is soursop. And it flowered last year, but um, it was knocked down in, the, in September of 2017. We had that huge storm. Got knocked down, we pop it up two or three times, and finally somebody came over and popped it up for me because he was just like nothing holding on. And it's flower, but it hasn't had any fruit. This one here is a very rare mango. 
This is called a Johnny France mango, and it was developed by a guy from Java. He used to be called Java John, and Java John was an expert on bananas. He had something like 50 or 60 varieties of bananas in his place, and then he developed this mango. It's a large mango. It's got a flat seed, and it's got no fiber. It's a delicious mango. Wow. What's Dragon it called? Fruit? Johnny France. Johnny France. Wow. F-R-A-N-T-Z. Wow. Where'd you get it from, him? From him, yeah. He gave me three. Um, he moved out of the area about 10 years ago, maybe. Do you know anyone in the area with that mango? Uh, the two that he gave me three. I gave two of them away. And uh, one is down here about three miles down the road. And the other one is down um, in Lake Worth. And they're doing really well. Dragon fruit, and this is American Beauty, which are the pink ones. And when you open it up, it's purple inside. That's a long gan. This is a star oh, apple wow, yeah. and a rare variety again. I bought this from Johnny. He had it in a 25 gallon pot when I bought it and had fruit on it. But it's really different because normally star apple grow purple and green. This one is pink. Wow. And the fruit is not as large, but it's just as delicious. And this is the second year we've had fruit. That one we lost to in a hurricane and had to cut the tree down to nothing. But it sprouted, and last year we had the first fruit. This is the second year it's fruited. Now, how often do you take care of this? Do you water this and fertilize this star? I, I, I water every day now because uh, we're having this drought. So I, dr I, I, I sprinklers, so I water every day. Fig tree back there, that's a, uh, the LSUs, which is uh, a purple. Uh, which fig. one's that? The one in the back against the fence. That one over there. Okay, okay. That one over there. This tree right here with the air delays is a black sapote. Uh, last year gave us fruit. We had two fruits from it last year. When we had all the wind knocked one down, so we only got to try one. And here I have Was it a garden. graft or a seedling, black sapote? What? Was it a graft or a seedling? It's a graft. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy anything. Do you know what variety graft it is offhand or no? No, I don't. Okay. This is a miracle fruit. Wow. Are you familiar with the miracle fruit? Oh, yeah. It's actually got a little berry so in there. You're the first person I know that has one bigger than me because I got a bunch. Yeah. Close to this size. Uh -huh. But how old is this tree? This tree is about. 13 years old. Yeah, I tell you, this is one of my favorite trees in my yard. It's, yeah. it's great. I like that's, it. that's a beautiful miracle fruit. That's nice and big. Do you ever trim it or never? Uh, I haven't trimmed it. I've done some air lace from it, but yeah. uh, the air lace will take forever. That's great. That's nice. Sugar cane. This is a canistel, or they call it egg yolk fruit. Yeah. When you open it up, it looks like egg yolk. That is a sour orange, and it's probably about eight years old and hasn't had any fruit. And I've been feeding it and taking care of it, but citrus are, I don't know, they don't do well here. That mango behind you there is a cat mango. It's a hybrid. They're about this big. Delicious tasting CAC. mango. CAC. CAC. Yeah, yeah, I have one. Maybe. You that? Yeah, yeah. You got it from Alex? Yep. Right up here is a cashew tree. And this tree, for some reason or other, we've had fruit three times last year, and it's fruiting again this year. Wow. Actually, it's fruited twice this year. It wow. fruited in January, and it's fruiting again. Wow, that's a big tree. No, yeah. that's that tree. Where's the cashew one? That one? This one. This big one here with all the flowers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See all the flowers? So that's the, that's the bark to the cashew tree right there? The what? That's the cashew tree right there? No. This, okay. This one here. This big one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. This is a seedling, but I tried to graft in the grafting tank, so it's been sitting there. It's probably two years old. Which one? This one here. Of oh, the same thing or of what? No, no. This is a mango. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I think I see a pomegranate stuck in here somewhere. Yeah, right? that's a pomegranate tree that right there. And that's the large ones. Um, we had a really good season this year. We probably had 20 fruit from the tree. And right now it's got about three or four on it. Is it in the ground or in a pot? No, it's in the ground. And uh, so do you know what variety that is? 
no idea. All I know is they're large, and it was given to me by an Iranian lady that uh, was a friend of mine, and she gave me a piece of her tree. She had wrapped it for me. Are there thorns on this, on there? Oh, yeah, thorns, yeah. Wow. So big, big and are the seeds hard or soft? They're soft. Wow, okay. A lot of people get pomegranate, and they said they're hard, and they're hard, and they, they don't taste good. The tropical uh, Vietnam one is a hard seeds, but those are the ones that grow here well. Really? The seeds are hard. Yeah. Well, wow. that one does really well. This is all peanut butter. That's a big peanut butter tree. These are all my seedlings. Peanut butter is a, a tree that you plant from seed, and a couple of years you have fruit. Wow. And or you have to feed them a lot. That one's been trimmed like four or five times. I'm going to have to trim it again. It's got big again. And it's loaded every year, right? Oh, yeah. It looks a couple of times a year. Behind here, this tree here is a um, Mexican guava, which I'm going to cut back quite a bit because um, it has a, a large fruit, but not very tasty. This is a long end tree that I had here for about 13 years, never fruited. We chopped it down and then it sprouted. Some of these, uh, you know, branches just came up. I'm going to see if it takes, I don't know. And here we have. Jabota Cava. I bought that one from Johnny too. And um, for some reason or other, it hasn't fruited in two years. Did it fruit before that? Oh, yes, fruited tons and tons of times and lots of fruit. What kind is it? Sabre? It's, uh, it's a dark purple. So. so for every year, it fruited a lot and then it just stopped fruiting two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Last year we had a couple on there. And this year, I didn't even have any. And wow. I feed it a lot, man. That's a tree that you have to water a lot. They like water. Yeah. yeah. Wow. This one here is a Russell avocado, the big long neck ones. Yep. And probably one of my favorite avocados because one avocado will feed a family. It's got a seed about this big and it's all meat. And here I have some papayas and some um, jackfruit. These are all seedlings. I don't know if they'll do anything. What about this tree? This one here. This is an ever-bearing guava. Wow. And you have fruit all year long. Right now, it's, it's got maybe one or two right now. But it has periods where they'll have probably 50 or 60 fruit on it. So right, we just, just about a month ago, we finished the harvesting. And now I just got a few odds and ends here. Very good tasting guava. It's pink in the inside, and it's probably that one's 15 years old, and I've never had a worm from it. Wow! Yeah. I had it in a pot, and it was dying on me, and I planted it here, and it's come back up soon. We'll see what happens. It's gonna do well with citrus. This is a Cuban pepper. They're about this big, and they are sweet. They're not hot. That one here is a something seeding it. I'm going to spray it again. This is um, Okinawa spinach. Okay. Yeah. That does well here. Yeah. This one here is another June plum, and this is called Golden Apple. And it's an ever bearing, so you always have fruit all year long. In here is my star fruit from Thailand. And when it starts bearing fruit, it gets tons and tons and tons of fruit. That's your tallest tree, huh? Yeah. And I've got to trim it again. It got too big. But it gets tons and tons of fruit. This is um, bay leaf. You familiar with bay leaf? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. great. Okay. I'm doing a graph there, see if it takes. That's um, ginger. And that's, um, what is that called? It's a plant that has some red uh, seeds, and they use it for coloring. It's a, it's a tropical tree. This is the most common oregano in the world, and they call it, they call it Cuban oregano here. But I thought that the Cuban oregano were variegated, but they call that Cuban oregano. I don't know why they call it Cuban oregano. I call it burro um, oregano. This is most common in the world. Okay, this way. 
rubber. I grow rubber trees and I give them away because people uh, think that they're lucky. So, and they're very good because you can keep them in the uh, in the house or outside. That plant there is a taro, and those are purple. They're uh, they're the long and not the round. They bear lots and lots of fruit, and I have them all over the place. I see the papaya sporadically around in the yard. Oh yeah, I when we had the big storm this year, I lost 20, 20 of them. Wow. So what I have left is just very few. Look, look at the papaya there. That's a male papaya tree. And to convert a male to female, you put a nail in it, and look what it's done. It's throwing out oh, wow. this little papaya. It's really weird. Wow. I never had that happen. What do you mean you put a nail in it? Where? It's it's got a nail through there. Oh wow! Yeah. That's what you do to convert it. That is a never bearing mulberry, and I trimmed it back because it was huge. Back there is a burro plantain. Um, probably one of the, that's the most common plantain in the world. Any place that had bananas, they would have those. Wow. You know, they're the square ones. Yep. Yeah. This is chayote squash. You familiar with chayote squash? Uh, a little, a little. I don't eat it, but I know it. Uh, yeah. It's it's quite a good tasting vegetable. Um, the leaves are edible, no? I don't know. I know that okay. the food is, but uh, I don't know about the leaves. And sometimes they come hairy, or no? Is that something? Oh different? no, it's a different variety. Yeah, yeah, these are the most common ones. These here. And here I have just odds and ends in here. Those things there are called plantain. You familiar with plantain? Yeah. yeah. Okinawa. This is Malabar in here. I have one there and I have one there. I think that's a green Malabar and this is a purple one here. No, I think that's green too. Um, okay. Behind us, this is a Simmons avocado right above wow. you. How do you like those? I love avocados. The only thing I don't like too much are the Haas. Yeah. But I will eat Haas, you know, when there's nothing else. So that's a Simmons. How old is this Simmons tree? This tree is probably nine years old. Wow. I bought this from one of the guys in the uh, director council. You know uh, Gary Gomez? He got most of my trees from him. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I bought that tree from him. All right. And here I have some uh, air lace. That's a wax jambo. That's a pomegranate. And this is a sour sap, and I don't know if it's going to do anything. That's my wax jambo. This one here is custard apple. Oh, wow. And they're usually, um, I've got to trim this tree too. It's gotten too big. And um, very fragile. I, I didn't know how fragile it was. Um, I had a, a very large branch up here, had a lot of fruit, and I got a hook to bring it down so I could get the fruit, and it broke the branch. So, uh, how old is this tree, this custard apple? This one's probably about 10, 12 years is old. Is it a seedling or a graft? Uh, I think it was a seedling. And how are they? Amazing? Oh, amazing. It's probably one of the better tasting. It's custard apples. Yeah. Did you get a lot of fruit off of it? Yeah. Uh, this year we had like 50 or 60. Wow. And there any issues with the, with the bugs on these? You know, they got the... There is a, a the fly beat, that attacks like, them yeah. and drills a hole in them. But... Um, you know, it doesn't damage the fruit. You take the fruit out and you, that part where they have drilled and you just take it out and throw it out. Wow, that's nice. So they get big, these trees, yeah. Okay. Sapodilla. And here on this side is a cat mango. And this one is about, uh, let's see, 10, this one's about 12 years old. Any issues with bacterial black spot on your cat mango? No. Okay. My Johnny France mango got sick three years ago, uh, the fruit got, you know, we couldn't eat the fruit because they got damaged. And so I cut it back down to nothing last year. It didn't flower. But this year I've been treating it. I put a special medicine together. I treat it and it's fine now. So hopefully we'll have some good time. This is my pride and joy, my coffee. This is a, 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 a Arab kind of Arabic, uh, coffee 
Do you actually make coffee for me? Yeah, four pounds last year, three pounds this year. Wow. Yeah. It's got good taste. This is a night blooming jasmine. And I, during this daylight hours, it blooms at seven o'clock. During the regular hours, it was the six. So what tree was this? This one? This one. Yeah, uh, wax jambo. So it if wasn't you know, a pot. It must have went through the ground, right? I had it in a pot because I didn't want it to get big. <laughs> Look how big it is. But it's in the ground now, right? Oh, yeah, it's in the ground now. I'm going to have to cut the pot out of it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, as you can see, it's got, it's got berries coming up there. And we've had, let's see. Yeah. Grass do really well on that, it takes really well. This is, are you familiar with uh, salvia? This is a med medicinal plant. It's banned in Dade County because the people smoke the flowers. So they ban it in Dade County. You can't have it in Dade County, but not in Palm Beach. I call it my miracle plant because you make all kinds of uh, medicine from it. And I keep, like, if you have gum disease, it'll cure gum disease. If you have a toothache, it'll cure the infection and it will um, kill the pain. Because it's what's the seven. name of it? Salvia. S A L V I A. It's also known as white leaf sage. It's in the sage family, but it's not the sage for cooking, it's for medicine. And here we have. This one here is my chayote uh, avocado, and this is winter avocado. So uh, quite, you mean? Chayote? Chayote, yeah, yeah. Chayote is those. Uh -huh. Choquette, yeah. Um, you start picking them in October, and they go all the way through March. We never get to March. We have gotten to February, but we ran out of avocados. So this, this... Two, two years ago, this tree gave 195 fruit. Last year we had like 95, so cut it back in half. But I, uh, I had trimmed it, so when you trim it, they lose a little bit. So what do you think of the quality of the best stuff? It's, it's a great tasting avocado. But like I said, I love avocado. Have you tasted a lot of the other ones? Yeah, I've had Lula, I've had um, the ones that are purple. I can't remember what the hell they're called. And very tasty. And normally a large avocado, they're not very tasty. Um, the small avocados, they call it, um, it's like a Haas. They're small. Yeah. And they're very watery. Yeah. Uh, we used to fit th those to the pigs. We, we didn't eat those at home. They Have you ever here. heard of one called Oro Negro? I heard of that one, yeah. So good. Is it good? Superior to any other one. Really? Wow. Yeah. You know, I had one of those trees and it died on me. Yeah, I had it in a pot. But I and don't know uh, so happened. how old is this chocolate avocado? This one here is about maybe what this one from somebody in the Ripley Council too. Uh, maybe 11 years old. Okay. Yeah. Wow. This one here is my Vietnamese banana. That bears one, two, and three bunches. Which is really unusual, you know. This is my, they call it Jamaican red, we call it purple banana. That one there is another plural plantain. And this mango here was given to me when I was taking a class in grafting. Put the graft on it, the graft intake, and I said, the hell with it, I just planted it two years ago. Look, it's plowing. The it's seedling, fruit. right? It's got fruit on it. And how are they? What kind of mango it is? How do they taste? This is the first year. Oh this wow! Year. Well, you'll find out. I'm anxious for it to get big and eat. That's great. Those bananas there are apple bananas, and I have a cluster apple back there. Oh, what kind of crusted apple? In the uh, ground? The the they call it heart. It looks like a heart when it gets yeah. red. Yeah. It's red inside. It's purple inside. Purple, really? Very is it in the ground? Where is it? It's on the ground, right behind the bananas over there. You can see, you can see the, the thing down there. That one's about two years old. Oh, wow. And I need, I need to do something with it because uh, they came to cut the trees down. They, they cut it and damaged the tree. 
So I'm going to have to just trim it back and say, uh, stop feeding it. They like a lot of room. They do, yeah. Yeah, they get big. Back here is my experiment that I did in race garden. And I've got about five varieties of uh, tomatoes in here. See these? These are purple. And they're sugar sweet. And Not the have, Florida Everglades, are they? No, no, these are the Florida Everglades. The little okay, bitty yeah. ones. And these are called... Oh, those are sweet. Yeah, they are sweet, yeah. These are called... Uh, sun gold. Sun gold. And they're very sweet, too. Yeah. And, of course, these here are the Everglades. It's like a cherry. It's like eating a cherry. What I like about these is they spread all over the place, you know. I've got to trim all these again. What were these called again? I don't know. That's sweet yeah. tomato. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my daughter sent me the seeds for those. And the yellow one too. Nice. And then we have ones that are medium-sized tomatoes there. They're quite sweet too. All the tomatoes in here are sweet. So I see you have a pump here. So you, is everything uh -huh. on irrigation here? Oh yeah, yeah. All my, both of the stuff in the gardens are. I have sprinklers set on both sides. So you need to have that here in Florida, because especially now that we're having all this you know, drought. So. Yeah. Well, it's looking good, man. Thanks and for that's showing about us. it. Oh, I didn't show you. This is a sugar apple, and these are my small girls. That's a sugar apple, and it's a weird, strange variety because it fruits in the winter, like three wow. or four fruits only. One year I had 12 fruit on it, but normally it's, it's a summer fruit, but in the winter it has fruit. And for some reason or other, last year, all the sugar apples started turning black. I don't know what happened. My friend who has a, a two-acre plot, and she had the same thing with hers, and she didn't understand what it was either. But I've been treating it, so hopefully it'll be okay this year. Yeah, I've had them get like that some years. Have you? Yeah. And I don't understand it because well, you gotta you gotta cover them with bags because the beetles will get in there. Really? You gotta cover I them with never bags. Never have a problem with beetles. But when they turn black, that's what oh, it is. Oh yeah, black. When they turn yeah. black, yeah. Uh -huh. That's basically it. Well, thank you, man. And uh, how long you say they've been living here? 22 years. And when you moved here, it was just empty and clean, nothing, right? Yeah. When I moved here, there was nothing here in the back, grass. And that, the mango tree, I sold to my neighbor uh, two years before he moved. And so that was there. That was the only one. The rest of the stuff was all put in. I didn't have anything on that side, nothing this side. Oh, that... Uh, Sour sap was this big. Wow. And every time the guy came to cut the grass, he used to cut it. He used to ruin it. So what I did is I put wire around it and I fed it fish. My my son and my grandson live here. They're both fishermen. And so when they bring me fish or they clean the fish, I take all the waste and you put it underneath the tree. It's incredible. It'll make everything bloom. Wow, does it smell? No, because I bury it. You know. Got it. Yeah, you bury it. Yeah. And wow. I, don't, I don't have any animals gonna dig it up, so. Yeah, how do you get animals here, like raccoons and stuff? I, we used to get raccoons here, but not anymore. Squirrels? Squirrels, yes, oh yeah, my nemesis. They well, well, love these avocados. Well, they love all the avocados. And what I've done now, is that they'll come and they'll take, they'll, they'll walk around the tree until they find the biggest avocado and they'll gnaw on it until it's about halfway done. Then they knock it down, they come down and they'll eat it on the ground. It takes them about eight days to eat the avocado, but then they go back and get another one. And I don't mind if they do that because, you know, one is more than enough to spare. Yeah, that's enough, you know, but um, they're a pain. I don't like squirrels. Uh -huh. Well, I have a I have a cage to catch them too, but they got too smart. <laughs> you can't catch them anymore. What would your advice be? Because you don't have a big space, but you got a lot of good stuff 
well planned out and planted, yeah. what would your advice be for people that think they don't have enough space to grow fruit trees? Well, you know, you can grow any kind of fruit tree in a, in a pot, the 25 gallons, you know? Um, that's what I used to do up north. Uh, when I was in England, the weather was so crappy that, you know, you couldn't grow anything. And I got some seeds. In, in England, the tomatoes were this big. They never had large tomatoes. And so I had some seeds blown back from the States, and I planted them in pots. And I had tomatoes like this, the big boys. They went crazy with the tomatoes. I, I had about 10 pots, and I keep them inside, right by the window, so they get the light. The following year, what I did is I planted potatoes and I planted uh, English cucumbers, you know, the big long ones. They did really well. But you can't plant tomatoes over there because the weather was so crappy. Now they tell me they're having summers. Incredible. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's certainly a nice yard and nice trees. Thank you for letting me come out and film. Okay, anytime. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. All right, everybody, there it was. That was like so cool and unique. I told you. Get to those uh, fruit sales, even if you don't need a fruit tree. I'm all got enough room filled up. I have no room for fruit trees. I didn't go there with the idea to buy a tree. I went there with the idea to film, document things, and meet people. And I'm so glad I met uh, the, the guest that was on today's video. And uh, put your comments or questions below. Please like and subscribe and share this channel with others. If people are looking to grow fruit trees or anything like that, let them know. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great day and keep growing.